WWE Night of Champions is going to be coming our way live from the TD Gardens in Boston, Massachusetts, coming up this Sunday, September 16th, 2012, only on pay-per-view. What better way to get ready for that pay-per-view as we have a very special edition episode of the RCWR show as it's our Call That Match special where I'm going to be giving you my match predictions on who I think is going to be walking away victorious from Sunday's pay-per-view. The RCWR show, Call That Match special, begins right now. Hold one, arm drag. Whoa! This is Rest, screwed, rest. Who are you to, to, to doubt El Dan? This guy's a serious professional. Rest. Hold two, arm bar. Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helton. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your hat. I hate your t-shirts. I hate your wristbands. I hate your shoes. I hate your music. I hate the C Nation. I hate everything that you stand for. So does rule. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Hold three. The Moss Covered Three Handle Family Gradunzo. Live from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C., this is the RCWR Show with your host, Lee Sanders. Yeah, what's up, everybody? A very good Saturday afternoon to you all. I'm the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders, coming at you live right now on. September 15th, 2012, we're just 30 hours away from the fifth installment of WWE Night of Champions. Do hope everybody's having a fantastic weekend so far. Hopefully you all are enjoying some of this good weather that we have. As you know, just around the corner, wintertime is coming. And lovely ladies, you all are going to have to unfortunately hide those nice shapes for the next couple of months. Guys, you're going to have to put away your guns. You're going to have to put away all that hard work you've been doing with those biceps, triceps, and your shoulders. You're going to have to tuck those away for a little bit. we got old man winter coming, but hey, you knew it wasn't going to last too long. But in either case, I do hope everybody's going out there and have those weekend plans. Enjoy some of this good weather. Also, Hopefully you're going to be making plans to kick back and watch some wrestling as we're going to have a pretty solid WWE pay-per-view coming this Sunday, Night of Champions, in front of a Boston, Massachusetts crowd. You know that crowd is going to be, without a doubt, on fire. Boston, Massachusetts, they definitely love their wrestling. That is probably one of those rare cities where... They will really let you have it. They will truly speak their mind. If you suck, they will let you have it. If you're on point, they definitely will show you the love. We got the chat room that's open right now in case you wish to participate in a number of the discussions that we're going to be covering. As Pretty much we're only going to be talking about match predictions, but feel free to jump in the chat room. We definitely would love to hear your match predictions Hear what all you have to say on what you think might be happening at this Sunday's pay-per-view. You can hit it up right now on blogtalkradio.com slash the RCWR show. You can also interact with us during this live episode right now. Also on Twitter, just hit us up at Infinity1Prod. While you're at it, take the time out to hit us up on Facebook. Definitely will like that page, as we're always reporting the very latest in wrestling-related news, entertainment news, so much more. Infinity One Productions. Get you guys ready for that pay-per-view. So, without any further ado, let's just go on ahead and let's jump right into it. And I definitely got to let you guys know that I was looking at these matches as they had became announced this past Monday night, and I was paying attention to additional late-breaking news, as we all had saw on SmackDown this past Friday night. Officially, another match was added, and it's going to be the Intercontinental Championship that will be on the line as The Miz will be involved in a fatal four-way, definitely stacking up to be a very solid pay-per-view coming our way 
this Sunday. So we have, of course, that YouTube special that's going to be kicking everything off just 30 minutes before the pay-per-view itself comes on. Now, we're going to see a battle royal in which the participants will be fighting one another to win the covenant spot of taking on Antonio Cesaro for his United States title later on in the night on the actual pay-per-view itself. Now, for those of you that were paying attention to Friday Night SmackDown, you all know that unfortunately no participants were named for this match. So definitely you're kind of going into this blind. But we did see one thing that I thought jumped out there. It definitely caught my attention, which was we saw Brodus Clay come out on SmackDown, and he got in the face of Antonio Cesaro. Might that be a subliminal hint from WWE that, hey, you're looking at the person that's going to be winning that battle royal to take on Antonio Cesaro for that strap? Could it possibly be Brodus Clay? Well, not really sure what to make of that, but one thing that I can definitely tell you And that's as long as we've been doing our Call That Match series, I've always tried to approach things from a writing standpoint, from a booking standpoint, as I do have that experience. But here's a scenario right here where I'm looking at this particular match, this battle royal for the United States spot to face the champion. And for the first time ever in our Call That Match history, I can't name a winner I would need to at least know who the participants are. So, unfortunately, as much as I would like to try to pick a winner in this, I will have to, unfortunately, pass. So, very rare do we pass on a match, but I think you guys can definitely understand and appreciate why we're just going to skip on down to the next one. So, let's go with the actual pay-per-view itself. Now, This is the way I am setting this up. I took a look, and normally this is another thing that I do not do with our call that match specials. I normally just sit up and I just take the matches just randomly. But for this particular pay-per-view, I wanted to book each match as I would lay it out throughout the night. And there is a reason why. I think you guys will appreciate this as really... I'm trying to look out for one, Dolph Ziggler, who, let's keep in mind, has that money in the bank contract that he can cash in at any time. And I'm definitely strongly thinking to myself, could Sunday night be a night where Dolph Ziggler may try to look for an opportunity to cash in that briefcase? Which brings us to that first match as Randy Orton is going to be taking on Dolph Ziggler. Now, Randy Orton, since he's been back from his suspension, he has just slowly but surely been getting back on the rise there. Looks like he's been winning the fans back over. Kind of looks like he's been starting to recapture that old Randy Orton that made him so good back in the day. It's just what I've been saying about Randy Orton within recent weeks, that Randy Orton... When he is chasing after something, he just seems so damn good, and you can't help but root for him. And that's exactly what's been happening as of late. He's been having some really great, solid matches, matches I definitely can't complain, as we had just saw him on Friday Night SmackDown for the first time ever take on Tensai and those two guys. They had a phenomenal match, despite the fact that Ziggler tried to get involved. Here we have this contest right here, and you know, just looking at the two names involved in this match, that it's going to be a damn good match. This is how I would definitely kick off the pay-per-view. Very good, strong opening right here. Dolph Ziggler, still fresh off of his victory over Chris Jericho on an episode of Monday Night Raw, where... Basically, he got Chris Jericho fired. So Chris Jericho is once again out of a WWE contract. 
Is it just me, or have we been noticing a certain trend that's been happening with Dolph Ziggler within recent weeks? It seems like one week he is able to pick up a win, but then when he goes on to the next show, he picks up a defeat, and then the next week it's a win, it's a loss, and it just seems like it keeps seesawing like that. I am not really sure what to make of that. I just wish that it was something consistent. One argument could be made, well, if he's eventually going to cash in the Money in the Bank contract, shouldn't he come off looking very strong? Well, I would definitely say yes if he were to go a babyface route, but so far we've seen no indications that Ziggler is even going to go down that route. So really... I would say he's going to do just like Edge, just like all the other heel champions have done over time that have won that Money in the Bank contract, and they're just going to pick that sweet spot. They're just going to pick that right opportunity to cash in that briefcase. But again, I'm talking about the briefcase. That's a little bit later. Right now, I'm talking about what's going to be happening with Orton versus Ziggler. So I'm looking at this match right here, and I'm saying to myself, I really love what's been going on with Randy Orton as of late. I definitely would love to see Randy Orton pick up a victory over Ziggler. Heck, to be quite honest with you, I actually wouldn't mind seeing the two of these guys continue some type of a feud past night of champions i think that this is pretty solid i think that if it's done right and it's written properly these two guys could have something that could stretch out for at least an additional two maybe three more pay-per-views but for this first encounter i'm looking for randy orton to pick up a victory i wouldn't be too surprised if post-match we saw a bitter Dolph ziggler try to jump on Randy Orton, but I love Randy Orton right now. I love where he's been going as of late, but I'm giving Randy Orton a lot of great praise here, but just bear this in mind as you're listening to this special. I'm not done talking about Dolph Ziggler, as I'll be bringing up his name again later on in the show. Let's move on with our next match as we see the WWE Divas Championship on the line as Layla We'll be defending it against Caitlyn. Now, we have that core audience out there that does not particularly care for the Divas division. Hey, I am definitely with you guys. My whole argument is the Divas championship really doesn't mean anything if it's not around the waist of the right diva. So here's a scenario right here where I'm looking at this match And just unfortunately, I'm just not invested into this. I'm looking at this. I'm saying to myself, I want to get behind this. I want to root these girls on. But I'm just not really seeing enough. I'm not seeing enough intensity. I'm not seeing enough energy. I'm not seeing enough passion. Let's go with Layla for a second here. And, you know, I've been a Layla fan for many, many, many years. I can actually remember how there used to be a time where the Divas division, um, the little Diva contest thing that they had going on, where it was one of the hottest things that was happening way back when. And I can remember how me, my friends, we all used to be talking and getting on the phone and talking about who we were going to vote for. Yeah, man, she looks pretty badass. Yeah, she's got a nice shape. Yeah, yeah, vote her. Yeah, cute face, vote her. And I actually remember when we did everything we could to get Layla in there, try to have her win the contest. And am I the only one that notices that Layla's demeanor has just really changed since the last time we had saw her on a regular basis? I mean, she has just done a one 80. This is not the same Layla that was teaming up with Michelle McCool, doing the whole flawless thing, or as some people will say, ripping off of the beautiful people, Angelina Love uh, and Velvet Sky. They, 
I'm trying to look at this. I'm saying to myself, what happened to the old Layla? What happened to the Layla that used to have a little bit of passion, that used to have a little bit of fire inside her belly there? Because the Layla that we have been getting as of late, I mean, literally, she's just been coming out there kind of going, oh, okay, who am I going to be wrestling? Oh, okay, I have to cut a promo. Oh, okay, I have to say a little something at the commentating booth. Everything has just been so monotone is basically what I'm saying, folks. And there's just really nothing you can really get behind. You are just sitting there and you're saying to yourself, boring champion, let's see a new champion. Okay, you want to see a new champion, right? All right, well then let's go over to the other side of the fence, shall we? We have Caitlyn. Now, Caitlyn, I must give her credit. Her in-ring ability when compared to the other divas who really do not have that much of a expansive move set, she's definitely on par with girls such as Beth Phoenix, Tamina, Natalia Nyhart. She's definitely up there. I won't say better than them because she's not, but she's definitely up there with those names. She almost reminds me of Ivory. I don't know if you guys remember that diva, but for those of you that do, mad kudos to you. That shows to me that you definitely have been watching WWE for a good minute if you remember that name. If not, Google search her, say WWE Ivory. You can look up some videos of her, and you'll see why I've made that comparison with Caitlyn. But she kind of reminds me a little bit of her, just a younger version, a more leaner version. Definitely, I see some really bright spots in Caitlyn. I really do. And on top of that, I just do not see enough at this time to make me sit up and say yes. This is definitely somebody I would like to see with the Divas Championship. This is definitely somebody I would like to see come out on a weekly basis. I will watch their matches. I, unfortunately, am just not getting any of that with Caitlyn. Now, the rare times that we have seen her cut a promo really has not been anything that has been memorable. I think the real story right here. When it comes to this match, folks, you have to look past it and you have to look a couple of weeks down the road. I think the real story right now is what is going on with Eve. As let's not forget, the executive assistant to the SmackDown general manager, Booker T, Eve, she's been sitting up and she's been possibly playing some type of politics trying to win over the good graces of the WWE Universe Booker T, Teddy Long, everybody trying to make it seem like she is really one of those type of women that can be a team player. We've seen her somewhat inject herself into Divas matches concerning Caitlyn and Layla. She's been doing everything she can to kind of come off as if she's just an all-around good person that means no harm. Now, we know sooner or later Eve is going to reveal her true colors. And when she does, I just have the strongest feeling that she's going to somehow set herself up to be in the position where she can potentially become the next Divas champion. I want you to bear that in mind as I feel that's the real story that's going to be happening. And the reason why I bring Eve's name up is to bring up this valid point, which is on this night, as much as I do not like Layla as a Divas champion, and as much as I'm somewhat sold on Caitlyn, but she's still a bit inexperienced to me, I'm definitely going to have to go with Layla for the retain right here, folks. That's the bottom line. That's what I'm sticking to, Layla for the retain. Let's move on to the next match now, which definitely, here's where things start to get a little bit difficult from here on out, folks. We got Kane and Daniel Bryan taking on the team of Kofi Kingston and R-Truth for the WWE Tag Team Titles. Now, we have seen Daniel Bryan 
Kane, they have just become a overnight sensation. I don't even believe WWE was really sure what they had got themselves into when they decided that they were going to have these two be involved in those awesome and now infamous backstage skits. I mean, we just saw another solid backstage skit on Friday Night SmackDown where Dr. Shelley popped up and he gave both of the guys two red balls and he told them to squeeze their balls. No, literally, he actually did tell them to squeeze their balls. A really freaking hilarious moment right there. But we have just seen really great chemistry from Daniel Bryan and Kane within recent weeks. And you're saying to yourself, oh, my God, how badass would it be to have these two guys form a tag stable? They'd be awesome right now. And it looks like WWE has caught on to that and we've seen them in a few tag team matches within recent weeks. Now we see these guys, they're getting ready to take on the tag team champions at Sunday's pay-per-view. The question remains, can Kane and Daniel Bryan do what's necessary to remain on each other's good side and basically focus on the work at hand in the ring and get the job done? That's the real question right now. Now let's go over to the other side and let's look at the WWE Tag Team Champions, Kofi or Truth. If you've been listening to the show, you know I've been very critical of the Tag Team Champions. And I can't stress it enough here, folks. We have these Tag Team Champions who really have not been doing anything, in my honest opinion. And here's what's really messed up about all this. We got our truth who is pushing the... Little Jimmy Says T-shirt, he's pushing the whole spiders and that whole crazy stuff going on. We go over to Kofi Kingston, who's been sitting up, and he's been pushing the whole uh, boom, 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 and he's got a little shirt going on, too. We see both of these guys, they are somewhat involved in the new WWE program that airs on Saturdays, the Saturday Morning Slam So they definitely are kid-friendly as well. I mean, we just see these guys, no mistake about it, they do such great work for the WWE. They are always one of the guys to sit up and they do some stuff overseas. They do all types of PR stuff. Man, kudos to those guys. But, you know, I'm talking about what's going on in the ring. I'm talking about commanding my attention as those tag team champions. Kofi, R-Truth, they have just run their course a very long time ago. And it's just gotten to that point where you're actually looking at Kofi and R-Truth and you're saying to yourself, I know these guys are just nothing more than transitional champions. Who could possibly be the ones to come in and take the belts off of these guys? Well, the answer to that could very well be Kane and Daniel Bryan. So you're looking at this and you're saying to yourself, okay, well then, in what direction could this possibly go? I'm definitely going in the direction of Kane and Daniel Bryan. I just feel that they have a really good, solid storyline that's been going on as of late, involving Dr. Shelley, who's now been popping up a little bit more on Raw. He's popping up on SmackDown. We have just a really, if you do it right, and I mean they as in WWE, if they do it right, this could be that tag team that could actually make the tag team division definitely relevant again but also take the tag division to that next level while also setting up younger champions to come. As I'm looking a little bit further down the road, and I'm saying to myself, hey, if there was ever a younger tag team that could definitely pose a threat to Kane and Daniel Bryan whenever... Everything just hits the fan. These guys are no longer able to work together as a stable. 
I'm saying to myself, if there was ever a tag team that could sit up and take those belts off of Kane and Daniel Bryan, it would definitely be the primetime players. Say what you want about them. I'm still behind those guys. And honestly, I truly feel in my heart of hearts that if Kane and Daniel Bryan were not in the picture right now with this whole tag division, I strongly believe that the primetime players would probably be the ones to take on Kofi and our truth for those belts, and they would probably get the job done. But Kane, Daniel Bryan, they have just been a sure, entertaining group of guys to watch within recent weeks. I say, why have these guys walk away from Sunday with a defeat as it really wouldn't do anything for them? And not to mention... A win for Kofi and R-Truth over Kane and Daniel Bryan, it's really not going to do them anything. It's just another win, but they aren't really capitalizing on it because they aren't cutting enough promos. I'm, quite honestly, folks, I'm ready to see these two guys split up already. I would love to see them involved in some type of a rivalry. Now, we all know that Ron Killings, R-Truth, whatever you want to call him, he has shown from time to time when he's gone that heel route, he knows how to do it. Might it be time to finally see a new layer be unpeeled from Kofi Kingston's demeanor? Just think about it for a second here, folks. Kofi Kingston has almost been in the WWE for almost the same length of time as Shelton Benjamin was, for those of you that remember Haas and Benjamin. And he's pretty much been a baby face the entire time. Might it finally be time to see some type of a mean streak and Kofi Kingston and finally start seeing this guy take himself to that next level that he needs to go to to even strongly be considered for a major push. Only time will tell, but for Sunday night, I definitely have to go with Kane and Daniel Bryan for the victory here and become the new WWE Tag Team Champions. Let's move on with the next match now where we got Antonio Cesaro who's going to be taking on the winner from that Battle Royal for the YouTube pre-show. Now, as I said earlier, wouldn't be right for us to even try to pick out a winner from that YouTube Battle Royal as we don't even know who the participants are and as we are on the air right now, there has still been no word as far as who all is going to be participating in that battle royal. So we're dealing with this match as it is, Antonio Cesaro taking on whoever wins that match. Now, folks, got to be brutally honest with you here. There's two ways that this could play out, but the end result, I feel, will remain the same. Let's say from a writing standpoint here, if I were to do this right, and I'm just going based off of what had happened with SmackDown this past Friday night, I would probably set it up so that Antonio Cesaro would take on Brodus Clay. Now, I would not have this be a squash match. Antonio Cesaro, he's been doing a pretty solid job, although I feel it could be a better job as the United States champion. I just feel that... He's slowly but surely starting to get the groove of things as far as his mic work, okay? I, I feel it's been improving, but I feel that it needs to continue to improve. It doesn't need to just stay where it is right now. In-ring-wise, the guy's been very solid. I've been loving it. No problems there. I definitely would not mind seeing him take on Brodus Clay. And like I said, it couldn't be a squash match. I would need to see Antonio Cesaro maybe do something shady, maybe get himself disqualified. And Brodus Clay, he went that way. But Antonio Cesaro, he still has the United States title. That way, it could be the official jumpstart to their respective rivalry. And then you could stretch it out for that whole next month leading into a next pay-per-view where possibly Brodus Clay could be crowned 
with the United States title. That's just basically how I would do it. So Brodus Clay versus Antonio Cesaro, I would have Cesaro still retain, but Brodus Clay would win via disqualification. That's one way that this could play out, folks. The other way that this could play out is just it couldn't even be Brodus Clay. It could just be somebody else that wins that respected opportunity to be able to take on Antonio Cesaro. But the end result, I feel, is going to remain the same, and that's going to be Antonio Cesaro walking away with that United States championship. So there's both scenarios for you right there. Let's move on with the next match now, folks, as we have definitely one that me and the lovely co-producer Tammy was talking about. And it's funny because there were a lot of these matches I was looking at today, actually right before I came on the air, and me and co-producer Tammy, I don't know, maybe we might start doing an original series where we do some uncensored, uncut stuff because... We just be going into all types of different directions when we are just off the air. A lot of great stuff we be talking about, but we were really going in depth about what all was happening with each match. But then when we got to this match right here, we were definitely on the fence on this as we were talking about it. And that's the fatal four-way that's going to be going on between The Miz, Rey Mysterio, Sin Cara, Cody Rhodes, you're looking at these names and you're saying to yourself, man, this is a case right here where it could possibly go in either direction, right? Well, when I was first looking at this, that's exactly what I thought too. But then I just really start doing a process of elimination here. Now, let's just go with Rey Mysterio first. Okay, folks? Rey Mysterio, I would just eliminate off the break. I mean, we just saw Mysterio come back a couple of weeks ago as he had suffered a concussion from The Miz, had sidelined him for a little bit. In case you missed it, Miz had did this powerbomb move on Rey Mysterio, and Mysterio, upon landing, he basically hit the back of his head. It met with the canvas, so that's how he had got the concussion that way. I'm looking at that, I'm like, ouch. You know, it just seems like Rey Mysterio is always injury prone. I still am not quite sold on Rey Mysterio just yet. I, unfortunately, I can't see him walking away as the new Intercontinental Champion, just keeping all those injuries in mind. So he would be eliminated off the break. Now, let's go over with Sin Cara, who a lot of people have continuously said from time to time that, oh, yeah, Sin Cara, Triple H's pet project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's been adding up to be somewhat of a failure. On the contrary, they've been doing the right thing. They being WWE, possibly Triple H, or collaboration of both, they have been doing a good job within recent weeks as they've been pairing him up with Rey Mysterio. Definitely a very solid move. And for those that have this fixation on seeing Sin Cara take on Rey Mysterio, it's being done right. And if handled properly, you'll get that match. It's just going to probably happen on the grandest stage of them all which is going to be WrestleMania 29, and I think that would be a damn good way to have those two really go at it. But you're looking at this fatal four-way match. You're looking at Sin Cara. You're saying to yourself, hmm, could Sin Cara possibly be the one to walk away with you with the Intercontinental Championship? Unfortunately, no. And let me tell you the reason why Sin Cara would not be walking out as the new Intercontinental Champion. And it pains me to say this, folks, but the one thing that Sin Cara does not have right now, can you guys take a guess what it is that I'm getting ready to say? He, unfortunately, is not bilingual. Now, we know WWE's core audience is English, but he's Spanish, too. Now, 
if he was like Rey Mysterio, I'd say, you know, yes, bilingual, yeah, bilingual champion, give the belt to him. But unfortunately, Sankara, he just speaks his native language. So unfortunately, that would eliminate him. If he was bilingual, I would actually strongly go out there and be like, you know what, he's been slowly building a little bit of momentum. Yeah, it could be his night, but unfortunately, not the case. And I even entertained the whole idea of, well, could it be possible that he could get some type of a mouthpiece to help him cut promos and all of that, maybe in backstage segments or what have you? I actually thought about that, and I'm saying to myself, okay, well, who could possibly be his mouthpiece? Because Ricardo Rodriguez, he's a little bit occupied. Rey Mysterio, I'm not quite too sure I could imagine seeing Rey Mysterio translate what Sin Cara is saying every single time we see these guys in a backstage segment or something like that. I, I just couldn't see that happening. I would have to see some type of a new character be introduced specifically for cutting Sin Cara's promos. Kind of like what was happening with, um, I'm trying to think here. Um, well, I guess Ascana and Cesaro, that's kind of one example. But another example could uh, be what all was going on with, I believe, I got the name. It's on the tip of my tongue. I can picture the guy. I could have sworn Armando Estrada used to say a little something, something on behalf of Umaga. Unless it was some type of a situation like that, folks, I just could not see Sin Cara being the new Intercontinental Champion. So that eliminates him. So what it really boils down to is Cody Rhodes, The Miz. Now, Cody Rhodes, to me, it would just seem like it'd be a monkey wrench thrown into this whole fixation that he's had within recent weeks over Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara wearing masks and that they're hiding something and all this other crazy stuff that he's been spitting out there within recent weeks. I just feel by him winning the Intercontinental Championship, it would just throw things off and he would just go in a completely different direction. That's really the vibe I'm getting because I don't know if it's been coming off that way to you guys on WWE programming within recent weeks, but it just really kind of seems like WWE, they aren't really sure what to do with Cody Rhodes. On the one hand, he's fixated on what's happening with Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes. But then on the other hand, he wants to become the Intercontinental Champion. Which one is it do you want, Cody? I'm all for Cody Rhodes getting back to that level that he needs to be at. I do miss him being at that level where at one time he actually used to come off like he was on the rise, but it just seems like that really hasn't been the case within recent weeks. I don't know. I'm looking at this match. I'm saying to myself, Cody Rhodes, uh, as much as I like the guy, and he he's just phenomenally awesome, no doubt about it. He's definitely up there with Dolph Ziggler. I just don't see him walking away as the new Intercontinental Champion. My money is going to be on The Miz. The Miz, he still has that whole look. He still has that aura about him, not to mention he's got that whole new movie that's getting ready to drop soon, coming out directly to DVD. What is it? Uh, the Marine Homefront. So I'm still going to stick with The Miz for a little while longer right here. I actually need to see a little bit more from Cody Rhodes. I need to see what exactly his direction is going to be. Is he going to be more into the Rey Mysterio, Sin Cara, trying to get their mask off of their faces? Or is he really just going to be admin about becoming the Intercontinental Champion again? Because Cody Rhodes just seems like he's all over the map right now. I need to see a more focused, one-directional Cody Rhodes. So, Miz for the victory. 
Let's move on with the next match, folks, which is going to be one of my main head jerkers here. This, as long as we've been doing our Call That Match series, this match, I, God, I really wish we had the uncensored, uncut version of what me, Cobra or Tammy, were talking about when we were getting ready to talk about this next match because... We had at least, and it was a damn good conversation, too. That was the messed up part, folks. It was like at least 30 minutes of talking about this match because we're like, what the fuck? It, it could go in either direction here, which is Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. Now, I want you to keep this in mind, folks, and, and we're going to reiterate it again on the post show in case you forget. This will be the third consecutive pay-per-view that Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio will be working together, okay? This would be the third consecutive Alberto Del Rio versus Sheamus singles match for the World Heavyweight Championship. First time was at Money in the Bank. Second time was at SummerSlam. Third time will be at the Night of Champions pay-per-view. And I'm saying to myself, okay, this could really go in either direction, because look at what's been happening with Sheamus within recent weeks. Alberto Del Rio has brought to the attention of WWE Board of Directors, Booker T, that, hey, Sheamus, his bro kick, it needs to be banned. He has been just causing long-term injury for some folks as they are never able to really fully recuperate from the bro kick as Victims of that unfortunate move have been referee Chad Penning, uh, Daniel Bryan, 17 seconds, Christian, who actually made a cameo on SmackDown this Friday night, agreeing with Alberto Del Rio that, yeah, ever since he got the broke kick from Sheamus several weeks back, a couple of months back, he has never quite actually been the same. He really hasn't been the same since, and he was talking about how he had just recently got shoulder surgery, and it seems like he just continues to deal with plaguing injuries, but all at the core of that bro kick. Uh, we saw Ricardo Rodriguez, David Otunga. I mean, there's probably more names if we could dig them up. But those just give you a taste of the people that have felt the bro kick. Heck, even Alberto Del Rio has been a victim of the bro kick a few times, but notice he's not pushing the neck brace. Wonder what's going on with that. But in either case, right here, folks, we got the bro kick banned until Booker T's investigation has been wrapped up and basically Sheamus is in the clear. But it was also stressed that if Sheamus tries to use that bro kick anywhere, at any time, he was going to be stripped of that World Heavyweight Championship. So you know everything that's at stake here. You see Sheamus taking on Alberto Del Rio. You're saying to yourself, what direction could this possibly go? I definitely feel you guys on that. When again, we talked about this for a good length of time. But let's just cut through all the red tape right here, okay? We got Sheamus who's been sitting up, and as of late, he has been digging down deep. He's been doing stuff that usually is not even considered to be in his arsenal of moves. I mean, we have seen him make guys tap out. We have just really seen him just continue to be very freaking impressive in the ring, whether the belt is on the line or not. We just see him just continue to be so dominant so impressive in the ring. Slowly but surely, he has just been winning over new fans every single time he gets in the ring. Here's a case right here where you're looking at it and you're saying to yourself, well, you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd swear that Alberto Del Rio is slowly but surely building some type of a stable because he's got David Otunga, he's got Ricardo Rodriguez, you know, he's got himself. I mean, that's three right there. Now, just think about it. Sheamus is going to be going into this pay-per-view. And, folks, what are the odds that perhaps David Otunga could possibly get involved in this match seeking some type of retribution for what Sheamus had did 
to him on Friday Night SmackDown. Definitely the odds are stacked, and it is not looking good for the World Heavyweight Champion. Now, the other thing that we have to remember, remember, the way I've done each match, I've actually booked it in a particular order. And I actually set it up so that Dolph Ziggler could come out and he could be looking to cash in that money in the bank briefcase. So now just look at all the elements that you have going on in this contest, folks. You have Dolph Ziggler. You have Alberto Del Rio. You have Ricardo Rodriguez. You have David Otunga. You got four people on one. Could Sunday night be the night that Sheamus loses that World Heavyweight Championship? The answer, folks, I'm actually going to say no. I'm going to say no. I just love Sheamus. I love what's been going on with this guy. I am just loving the way he's been going out there week after week, pay-per-view after pay-per-view, and he's just been putting it all out there. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, then, if Sheamus retains, what could possibly be next for Alberto Del Rio? I'll tell you what's next, and I'm looking down the road here, and I will reiterate this again when we get ready to do the RCWR post show, as I definitely would like to get you all's reactions, as, of course, we'll be covering the fallout from the Night of Champions pay-per-view, get you all's reactions. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking a little bit further down the road. I'm saying to myself, you know what, there needs to be a scenario occur where Booker T, as well as the WWE Board of Directors, they pretty much get in the picture, and they say, look, okay, Alberto Del Rio, who honestly I see will try to demand one more match. I kind of see all of these guys getting involved in saying, Alberto Del Rio, you get one more match. If you are not able to get the job done, you're not going to get another title shot so as long as Sheamus is world heavyweight champion. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying to myself, okay, does WWE take the gamble and have both of these two guys go at it for a fourth consecutive pay-per-view, with stakes being very high. Honestly, I think at this point, if I were a betting man, it's highly possible that Sheamus could lose his cool and he could be stripped of that World Heavyweight Championship. Now, where it could occur is a different story. Do I see it happening at Night of Champions? Do I see Shame as being stripped of that championship? No, I don't. But I do see him retain, but it's going to come at a very high price. As if I was really setting this up right, folks, I would have all of those guys that I just mentioned who seem to be forming some type of a stable I would just have all of them proceed to just beat the living heck out of Sheamus, beat him down just so bad that you're kind of saying to yourself, oh, my God, what the heck is going to be next for Sheamus? And then you go to that episode of SmackDown and you just see Sheamus. They, if they do it right, they can actually have Sheamus be off TV for about two weeks, have him come back and all he wants is the big payback. He's looking to dish out punishment. Maybe then we could possibly see him say, you know what, forget Booker T's rule, and he could just do the daggone bro kick and not really care. But Night of Champions, I'm going with Sheamus for retain, but it's going to come at a very high price, that I assure you. Let's move on with our last match of the evening, folks, which sees John Cena taking on CM Punk for the WWE Championship. Now, this one was not a mind jerker. This one was more on point. This one was more clear cut. We've seen these two guys. They have just cut some phenomenal promos within recent weeks. Unfortunately, we had found out what we did about 
Jerry Lawler, and, you know, we had nothing but very kind words to say about Jerry Lawler as we had provided the very latest on his health update on our Tuesday night wrestling report edition of the RCWR show that's just dedicated to talking about WWE. You can definitely check that show out back in the archives if you haven't checked it out yet. It was a really good listen. And, you know, unfortunately what had happened with Jerry Lawler, it got over, it overshadowed what great promo work was done by John Cena, CM Punk, as John Cena was just very, very real with CM Punk when he sat up and said, you know, the only moment that has really defined your career so far was the pipe bomb moment that you did last year. Since then, you sitting up talking about how you want to be the leader of change and you want to speak for those that can't speak. Let's fast forward. It's been a year later. What has really been accomplished? Nothing. There's no ice cream bars. There's no new stars. Although we kind of know that's not so true. There have been some new stars there. It, it, it's been a slow progress, but we are seeing new talent. But that's just something John Cena would say, that there was no new talent, no stars, that the show hasn't become more edgier, that basically CM Punk, he just did what he needed to do to put himself in a position of becoming the WWE champion and would knock CM Punk for stealing the colors off of other wrestlers, legendary wrestlers at that, stealing their signature moves, basically saying that CM Punk is a thief of no originality and that he needed to find his own identity as pretty much he's saying to CM Punk, look, I'm going to not just beat you at Boston. I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to take away that WWE championship. We see that the stakes could not be set any higher because John Cena has a lot to prove on the grandest stage of them all. In his hometown in Boston, Massachusetts, the stakes could not be any, any higher here, folks. But then we got to go over to the flip side here. We got to look at it from the WWE champion CM Punk side. CM Punk, he has just been in this morph of a badass heel within recent weeks. I don't know about you guys. I'm definitely loving it. Not quite like the old CM Punk for you hardcore CM Punk fans that remember him on the indie scene, remember the work that he was doing in Ring of Honor. Not quite the CM Punk you all are used to, but at least we're getting shades of that old CM Punk And then just the fact that CM Punk has recently associated himself with Paul Heyman. Brilliant move by WWE to try to help really get over CM Punk as that badass heel to make you want to hate him. I definitely am looking at all this. I'm seeing the latest developments between Punk, Paul Heyman, all that. And I'm saying to myself, you know what, Punk... He has to retain, and he will retain, okay? I do see CM Punk's title reign coming to an end. I do see it happening. However, I do not see it happening this calendar year. I think the big payoff where we could see CM Punk lose that championship belt is going to come from none other than The Rock, Mark my words on that, circle the calendar, you know, circle the date today. That's what I see happening. But for Night of Champions, CM Punk, I see him retaining to set up a very monumental episode of WWE Raw Monday night, just less than 24 hours after the pay-per-view, where I strongly believe something historic is going to happen. If I was doing this right, and I'm just thinking about what all we were able to learn within recent weeks, what all that we have reported. We know that there's a new WWE belt that is getting ready to make its debut. Might this coming Monday night be that moment where we see basically the crowning of a new era in WWE? 
Should be a very interesting Raw right there. But that's your recap uh, right there, folks. That's your review for the WWE United Champions. Those are my match predictions. Those is who I'm going to be going with for the winners. Let's go ahead and let's recap for you guys one more time in case you have missed it. And it goes as follows. Let's take it up at the very top. For the YouTube special, once again, this is a first. I can't give you a prediction on who will win that as I do not know who the participants are. So we'll have to go to the actual pay-per-view itself. For Randy Orton versus Dolph Ziggler, I have Randy Orton picking up the win. For the WWE Divas Championship, I have Layla retaining from Caitlyn. For the WWE Tag Team Titles, I have Kane and Daniel Bryan beating Kofi and R-Truth to become your new Tag Team Champions. For the United States Championship, a questionable Brodus Clay, but regardless, whoever the winner is, I believe Antonio Cesaro will still walk away with the United States Championship. For your fifth match, which sees The Miz taking on Rey Mysterio, Sin Cara, Cody World, Rhodes, I said World Rhodes, <laughs> it's Cody Rhodes. For the Intercontinental Championship, I see The Miz retaining. For your sixth match, Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. Though the odds will be very stacked high. On the World Heavyweight Champion, I see Sheamus somehow digging down deep and being able to retain. And for your main event, John Cena versus CM Punk for the WWE Championship. In front of a white high Boston, Massachusetts crowd, I have CM Punk retaining. What's your match predictions? We definitely would like to know who you all is going to be walking away from the WWE Night of Champions pay-per-view. We definitely would love to hear what you have to say. Send us your tweets. You can hit us up at Infinity One Prod. Best match predictions, especially if you are on point. We'll show you love. We'll definitely give you props live on the air as it all leads into the RCWR Post Show coming on this Sunday night live at 11 p.m. Eastern, immediately following the WWE Night of Champions pay-per-view, where we'll be covering the fallout, we'll get you all's reaction, and we're actually going to do something that's actually very rare. It'll be the second time that we're going to be doing it. We're going to offer some prizes up for grabs. That's right. We're going to be offering some free prizes for our loyal listeners just for checking out the show so tell your friends tell your family everybody that likes wrestling have them check out the show it's going to be pretty awesome it's our way of giving back to our listeners and thanking you all for the continued support that you've been giving us all these months since we've been on the air as it all leads into our 100th episode coming up october 23rd we'll be joined by special guest the famous Justin Reno. And guys, if you haven't checked out that episode of Impact Showdown Radio from this past Thursday night where we had Justin Reno come on to the show just before his match against WWE legend, the Honky Tonk Man, you definitely want to go back and check it out. It was one of the best episodes that we've put out there to date. Even Justin Reno had liked it, and uh, he's patiently been waiting for a remix version of it now, so we're going to send that to him. But check it out when you get a chance. It's definitely a pretty awesome episode. You won't be disappointed right there. We also got other guests that's going to be popping up, and we'll be announcing their names in the upcoming weeks. But that's going to do it, folks. Programming note, the RC CWR show will be making a rare Monday night appearance this coming Monday immediately after Raw to cover the fallout from Raw and talk about what all had happened. So to make sure that you're able to join us 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern. In the meantime, we'll see you this Sunday night for the RCWR post show covering WWE Night of Champions. Till we hear from you guys this Sunday night, I'm the Black Avenger, Lee Sanders. You all be safe and you all be kind to one another, folks. We'll see you this Sunday night. Do take care.